Now, getting back to our diagram here, I mentioned in the previous video that the sample and hold is generating a staircase wave. And that should be pretty obvious what that means here when you actually look at the values that are being generated by the sample and hold. You can see here now that on the vertical dimension, the continuously changing sine wave has now been turned into a series of steps, like in a staircase. In this particular case, because the steps are going up and down, the sine wave itself is sweeping up and down, the steps are going up and down. So, for example, if we were to now take a different kind of waveform and plug it into our sample and hold, we'd get a different kind of staircase. So let's come back over here to the Moog Modular V, and what we're going to do is disconnect our sine wave, and we're going to go and grab a sawtooth wave. A sawtooth wave, as you recall, is a wave that rises abruptly and then drops gradually if it's a descending sawtooth, which this one is in this particular case. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug that into the input now on our sample and hold, and I'm going to go up here and increase our frequency a little bit of the clock rate just to make this a little bit more audible, and this is what we're going to hear. So that's pretty obvious, and looking at the diagram here, this is what you'll see. Whereas previously with a continuous sawtooth, we had a smoothly changing descending slope here. When we sample at a specific interval and hold until the next one, what we get now is very much what looks like a staircase. We have the waveform rising abruptly to its peak and then stepping down to its lowest level again, again and that's what this is going to sound like here. Now again, because there's no particular synchronization between those two waveforms, between the sawtooth itself and the clock waveform that's being generated in the sample and hold, sometimes those steps are not always at the same interval. It really depends on the rate at which you're sampling. But again, let's go down a little bit here to a slower step, just so you can hear that a little bit clearer. So let's try to get this in the, oh, in the uh, three second range or so. A little tough to get right to there. Well, let's go for four seconds. And what that means, by the way, is that when I when we're talking about four seconds here, that is not. It doesn't mean that we're sampling every four seconds. What that means is that every step is happening at a rate of four hertz. In other words, we need to think of this as being an inversion of that rate. The higher the number here, the faster the number of steps we're gonna be taking at any particular interval. So overall, that clock sample is happening at a higher frequency, which means that the steps themselves are smaller. So again, here's our staircase wave. So we get a kind of an interesting automatic control of our waveform here, of our sine wave oscillator, that is, in a way that we really would be very difficult to play by hand unless we're some kind of keyboard virtuoso or something like that. And as I said, I can't really do that. So we're able to play that much faster and smoother than we could with a keyboard itself. And in the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at some more applications of this in a more musical environment.